In this project, we'll learn how to spawn blood, and wherever that blood touches a collision shape, it will draw to it. We can also do it with transparent blood too. Another thing we'll be learning is how to save the blood. So if I press S, I close it down, and I reload the application. If I press L, reload it. So let's get into it. I'm going to focus on the drawing aspect of this tutorial. I'm not going to focus so much on the setup, but there's some vital things that we need to go over. So I have a main scene. I have some background just for visuals and I've got a platform marker which I will then drag on platforms. You see the platform's just simple, it's a static body 2D with a sprite and a collision shape. Just making sure the collision shape covers it. When the blood hits the platform then we'll draw to it. Once it leaves the platform then we'll stop drawing. Make sure that the keys and mouse clicks are representative of the name. I'm going to go back to main and we'll just drag in some platforms. It doesn't really matter where as long as the blood can hit them. If anyone's ever used Game Maker before, we have something called a surface in that. So we're going to make something that's kind of similar. It's going to be a, t a texture 2D. So we're going to make a sprite, sprite 2D. I like to put something in it just so I, can, so I can see a representation of it. What's really important for this is that on the offset, we want the centered off. Don't worry about seeing this texture. It will be written over with the blood. Let's change the name to surface. Save that. Now what we want to do is go to the project, project settings. Go to the globals, find the surface, open it and add. This means it will always be displayed in the background. However, we want this to be shown on front. So what's really important here is go to the ordering and the Z index. We want this as high as possible. The reason is the higher this number is, the closer to the, your eye it is. The, the lower it is, the further away. So obviously we want the blood to be painted on top of things. Now we want to add in a script for our surface. I'm going to remove this just for now and paste these files. So if we go to our image, it's one way we can actually manipulate images. And once we've manipulated the images, we use something called an image texture to convert it back to uh, a texture 2D. To do that, we'll need one of these. Surface texture, image texture is image texture new. So effectively, once we've used blood painted onto a surface, we use the surface texture to convert it into a texture, which will then display it on the actual surface, Sprite 2D. Blood size will just determine how big this sprite is. So if you have a blood that's a bit bigger than mine or smaller, this will handle it for you. We now need to make a ready function. We need to create a transparent image, which will act as a blood and we'll paint onto that transparent image. So to do that, we need to create a transparent Great. We need the width of what the image is meant to be. I'm going to make this quite big. 25 by 2000 is much bigger than our screen size. I'm going to say false for this. And image format is really important. We'll want to make sure our blood image and surface image are both have the same format. So I'm going to use image format RGBA8. Then I want to fill this image with a transparency. I've zoomed in a little bit so people can see it on mobile. I hope this helps. Next, we're going to focus on our blood image. We need to load in the blood image into blood image. You can do this by saying blood image dot load. And then we can basically find it on here or we can drag. I'm going to drag. I'm using blood image one, that's not transparent, but you can use the whatever blood you'd like. We're going to convert this image into the one that matches with surface image, so there's no format conflicts. Convert, and I'm just going to image. Now I'm going to focus on doing the function that will draw the blood image to the surface image. Now this comment says we're going to stamp the blood onto the surface and to do this we need the surface image lit rec what image do we wish to stamp we want this blood image so this is where it might get confused with some people i'm just going to double click this as you can see it's a three by three image and we need rect 2i so i know that we want to start from zero which is here and then three by three so to do that we can type rect 2i I'm going to say vector 2 as a position and for the blood size which we've put here we can say blood size then we need a draw position where's this going to appear on our surface image draw pos 
which we'll be passing through here. Now the issue is with blood size, we don't have a blood size yet. I should have done this earlier, so I'll do it now. Right at the bottom, blood size equals blood image dot get size. So this way, if you change your blood and it happens to be a bit bigger, we don't have to mess around with this. For us to see the blood, we're going to have to convert the surface image back into a texture. So we're going to do that now. We're going to say texture, which is the texture of the sprite 2D equals image texture dot create from image and we're going to pass in the surface image so right now we could make something quite simple which i'm going to do as demonstration i'm going to go back to main and i'm going to add it in its own script here i'm going to say surface dot draw blood for some reason my intelligence isn't working but it does on my other project so i'm going to get the global mouse position and this will just draw blood wherever my mouse is currently So you can kind of see how this is going to work. If we collide with the platform, we want to draw blood. If we're not colliding the platform, we don't want to draw blood. So I'm going to remove this line and we're going to need a blood object. So we're going to need a new area 2D. I'm going to name this blood. In fact, I'm going to name it blood particle. We're going to add in a sprite 2D. And we're also going to need a collision shape. Sprite 2D. I'll move over Blood 1 as, that, as that's the one I'm currently using in code. Let's zoom in so we can see it a bit better. And then we need a collision shape that kind of matches the blood. Reposition the collision shape. Now I'm actually having this a little bit smaller than the blood particle itself. I think the reason is is if the blood touches here, it would paint where there's no platform. Really, you should tweak this to your user needs. Uh, mine is 1.5. Save that as Blood Particle. Now the blue particle is going to need some script, so make one of those. I'm going to remove this for now. So I'm not going to go over the blood movement as much as I normally would because it's not that important. The main importance of this is painting blood to a scene. I'll copy these vars now. The very first var is, is colliding. By using this, we can then say, right, if we're touching the platform, we're drawing blood. If we're not, then we're not. And how we're going to do this is using signals. Let's go back to 2D. Select your blood particle, go to your node, and you'll see body entered and body exit. We'll use both of those. Connect them. Connect them. So when we're entering, of course, we want it to be is colliding true. And false. Arch is to remove passes. I'm going to make a new physics process. So let's make a funk physics process. I'm going to make a new funk called handle blood movement. And I'm not really going to focus on this because it's not that important. You'll see weird stuff like wobble and all that sort of stuff. The main important thing is if we're not colliding, then we're in the air, so fall fast. We don't want to wobble. If we're touching a platform, then fall slower and we'll want to wobble. So wobbling just means that it'll go right to left randomly. It's kind of like to have blood trickles. But like I say, the movement's not that important. Under handle blood movement, we want to check if we're colliding. If we are, then we want to call service and draw blood. So to do that, we're going to say if is colliding, then we're going to get the surface. Draw blood, which is still not showing, but it is there, and get the position of this blood particle. Also, we don't want the blood to last forever. So we'll say if position dot y is greater than a thousand, q for it. And save. Now we want to spawn blood when we press our left mouse button. So let's go back to main. I'm going to remove this. We're going to add in two variables that are exported. We're going to add the blood scene, which we want to pass through and how many particles we want to spawn in one mouse click. I'm going to say 50 for this tutorial. Save that. Now I should have go to my main. You notice that the blood's empty. That's really important that we fill that with the blood particle. Save that. Go back to our script. In physics process, we're going to spawn some blood. We're going to check if the left mouse button is clicked. And if it is, we'll do a for loop. In this case, it'll be 0 to 50. Make a new blood instance. And then we're going to instantiate that blood into this instance. Then we want the blood to be at the mouse position. Get mouse global position. Then we're going to add the blood particle to the main scene. Save that. Now looking at the blood particle, once it spawns, you'll notice that it will kind of have like an explosion based on these numbers. As you see, it's working. 
Now, a friend and YouTuber said that it'd be good to have this as transparent so you can actually see through the blood and see the texture. So we'll just do that quickly and I'll show you how this works. We're going to go back to the surface and where I have blood one, I'm going to change that just to blood, which I know is a transparent version. Save that. Another important thing is we want to go to our blood particle and the sprite to match as well. Now you'll see something here, you can kind of see that it's two lots, that's the issue of transparency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the particle as it's drawing and show it when it's not and this will stop that overlap. It's quite an easy fix. We go back to the blood particles and as you can see if we're not colliding we want this to be true and if we are colliding we want it to be false. So it means that we shouldn't have that overlap. I think that looks better. So the last thing we can do now is how to save and load. This is going to be a quick and dirty way of doing it. So in the service, we're going to put in a save function and a load function. So let's do the save first, save blood texture. And we're going to say surface image. It's got a nice method for us called save PNG. I'm just going to hard code blood texture .png. And to get that to save, we need to call it. So in main, we can say if is action just pressed and save. Then we're going to call the surface. And it's still not working from there. So save blood texture. Save that. Let's demonstrate it. And now if I press S, I close down the project. And we can see a blood texture here. If I open it in the file manager, maybe this will work. And you can kind of see it's there. Now we need a way to load it back in. Input is action just pressed and load. And I know I've not made the function yet, but we'll just call it anyway. Load blood texture and in the service blood texture. What you'd normally want to do is check that the texture exists or the file exists and then if it does load it and if it doesn't then you leave it alone. Um, I'm going to be quick and dirty with this. We're going to get the service image and this time we're going to say image.load from file and then we need the string. I'm just going to copy and paste to make sure I don't do any typos. Finally we want to update the texture of the surface to the loaded image. So texture equals image texture create from image and then just a service image. Let's save that and let's demonstrate it. Now if I press L you can see it's loaded the texture. If you'd like to clear the texture and start again we can do this by making a clear. So we get the service image we fill it with a transparency which basically means it just kind of wipes everything out and puts a transparency over it. If we go back to main we'll just say UI accept see if that works. First I'm going to load it in and I'm going to press enter and that's cleared it. The GitHub project will be in the description. Thanks for following along. Take care. Bye bye.